Okay, here we have a brand new recovery cylinder. Uh, virtually all the recovery cylinders anymore are the 400 PSI good for R410A. And I'm going to go through the procedures we use when we get a, a new one. Uh, some of you guys will think I'm being excessively picky about some of the things I do with these recovery cylinders. Uh, I'll teach you the best way I know. Then you can screw it up out in the field if you want. So, anyway. Uh, go over a few things about these cylinders. They're obviously a reusable cylinder. Uh, a lot of guys would say, well, I'll just take a throwaway cylinder and I'll use it. If the throwaway cylinder was made since about 1990 or 92, can't remember which, you can't do it because of the check valve in it. You can't put pressure into one of them. You can only take pressure out. Uh, and they're really not a great idea anyway. They are throwaway for a reason. These things have to be tested every five years. And there's on the side here, I'm not going to get close up, but your test dates are on there. Uh, and uh, so in five years, that thing is going to have to be tested uh, before it can be used again. Okay, let's take a look at the valves close up. Okay, the way these valves are set up is one of these valves taps the very top of the cylinder, just goes right down to there. The other one has a tube that goes all the way to the bottom of the cylinder. That's going to be the liquid line, because you don't turn this one upside down. I mean, you can, but it'll kind of work backwards. Uh, so, uh, if you want to pull liquid out of it, then you would open the liquid line. Now, I'm not going to show you real close on these, but this is the liquid line. It's red. That's the gas line. It's blue. So the gas line is going to go to the top, and the liquid line is going to go to the bottom. Now, this color code, <laughs> I'm not sure they're still doing it, but uh, one manufacturer used red for liquid, and the other manufacturer used blue for liquid. And so you can't really count on the color code. So if I'm putting pumping refrigerant into this thing, it doesn't make any difference which valve I'm going into. Neither here nor there. Uh, a lot of guys say, well, you got to put it in the gas valve, you got to put it in the liquid valve. It really doesn't make any difference. And in fact, when I'm evacuating these things, I actually pull out of both sides just to get more pull out of it. Okay, so these are designed so that I can pull refrigerant out of a system and then put it back in to the same system. Now, legally, I can do that if the refrigerant is not changing ownership. Uh, say I had a guy that owned a building I pulled some refrigerant out of one unit I could put it into another unit on that same building or owned by the same owner I don't ever do that I suppose I would if there were very large amounts of refrigerant or if it was something like R12 which is grossly expensive but I don't have control good solid control of the quality of the refrigerant. And I certainly can't take this out of one guy's refrigeration system, put it in another guy's refrigeration system, and charge him for the refrigerant. It has to come up to ARI 700 standards before you can do that, and you can't prove it did. So, I don't, I virtually never take a refrigerant out of a system and then put it back in. I put new refrigerant in it. And I, I don't say it's not necessarily a hard and fast rule, but it is what I do. Okay, uh, so I don't care whether I have liquid or 
or gas valves or anything else on there because I'm going to put refrigerant into it. I'm going to take it down to my refrigerant supplier. He is going to take it back and he charges me for the refrigerant that's in it and he empties it. I get the cylinder back. Okay, a couple other things about these cylinders. They all have a tap here and a tap back over there. One of them is like a 3 8 pipe and the other is like 3 quarter. This one here is for a float device. And you can put a float device in it so that when it reaches 80% uh, then I can uh, uh, it'll shut off a recovery machine. Likewise this one back here is for uh, that tap is for a recovery machine that has a float test and it goes in there and there's an umbilical cord that comes for a recovery machine. Okay, All that being said, we seldom use those anymore. The issue that they're trying to avoid is putting more than 80% of the rated capacity in this cylinder. If you put over 80% and let's say it's 30 degrees outside okay and I put it 95% full well if I throw that thing in the back of the truck the temperatures rise to 95 I'm gonna blow the safety on this thing there's a safety right back here I don't know if you can see that silly thing it's right because that safety is gonna blow off so what do we do? We uh, weigh the cylinder. When you first get the cylinder, this is how I do it. I mean, there's a tear on these things. Tear is the weight of the cylinder. And what I usually do is I take the weight of the cylinder. I weigh it on my scale. Then I take 80% of what this cylinder can carry 30 pound cylinder 24 point something uh, I'll figure that out for you in another video and I write it on the cylinder so when my scale comes up to the weight that I have written on there I stop that cylinder is considered full this being a brand new cylinder, the first thing we're going to do to it is pull the nitrogen out. It's full of nitrogen. It's got a pressure in it. I'll uh, kind of open this tap on it. Okay, you can hear there's dry nitrogen in these things. You don't want to put refrigerant in there with the nitrogen. So I'm going to take a vacuum pump and I'm going to pull it out. Okay, with both valves open, you notice I'm showing 86.7 and 87 PSIG on my gauge. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump the nitrogen. Now, to me, the best way to do this, and there's a number of ways you can do it, I tend to like to backseat these valves. Okay, both of those are open, so now I'm communicating from the valves through the hoses. Okay, now with both valves open, I'm going to crack this process line. And you can see the pressure dropping as we go. When this gets down to about, oh, two pounds or so, I'm going to hook this up to the vacuum pump. Now the reason I'm hooking it up to the vacuum pump with pressure still in it Vacuum pumps do not like positive pressure, so I'm getting it very low, and I'm making sure there's no air that gets back into this cylinder anyway. Okay, we're down pretty low on our pressure. I've got a vacuum pump right here. 
I'm going to go ahead and put this process line to the vacuum pump with that small amount of pressure on it and then I'm going to start the pump. is going okay you can see here that the microns are dropping down okay this looks like about the best we're gonna do 366 microns uh, to get this thing shut down I kind of go backwards I start here and shut these valves off then I shut this valve off here and the one on the other side too and we can shut down the vacuum pump okay so you're pretty good uh, this thing is ready to use now remember this has got a vacuum in it so you do not open these valves uh, unless you have refrigerant pressure here because you'll suck air in there and we'll go over that when we do a, uh, a recovery off of a machine